Number 73 on AFI's 100 Best Movies is Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, a classic western released in 1969, directed by George Roy Hill and written by Wilman Goldman. The movie stars Paul Newman as Butch Cassidy and Robert Redford as the Sundance Kid. The film blends traditional western elements with modern sensibilities, not just to the era it was made, but ones that endure. The movie is marked by witty dialogue, charismatic performances, and innovative cinematography. It tells the story of two outlaws and their band, the Hole in the Wall. Gang. These likable outlaws try to evade the law after a series of train robberies. The film opens with a sepia-toned montage of photographs and film clips from the early 1900s. This sets the historical context of the Old West nearing the end of its era. We're introduced to Butch Cassidy, who's charming, clever, and intelligent. He's the brains of the operation. The Sundance Kid is his partner and best friend, a skilled gunman with a quiet demeanor. We meet them through a card game. The game almost turns deadly when Sundance is accused of cheating. Butch breaks the tension with his trademark humor. Right away, the dynamic between the two is set. Butch's charm and Sundance's quiet intensity is well established. The film's early plot revolves around two consecutive train robberies. In the first, Butch Sundance and their gang rob the Union Pacific Overland Flyer. It goes wrong when the gang uses way too much dynamite. The result is that the safe and the entire baggage car it was kept in is blown apart. It's played for comedy and establishes their notoriety. The scene also sets up their eventual downfall. The owner of the railroad grows tired of repeated robberies. He assembles a special posse to track them down. The second robbery, designed to be a clever repeat, turns sour as the posse is immediately on their trail. This turning point shifts the gang from confident criminals to fugitives. One of the most iconic sequences in the film and in cinema history is the extended chase. Butch and Sundance are without their gang. They're being pursued across terrain by a posse that's unshakable in their persistence. The duo tries everything to elude capture. The sequence is punctuated by Butch's repeated question, Who are those guys? Who are those guys? Who are those guys? This underscores their frustration and helplessness against the unstoppable force. Butch and Sundance decide to start anew in Bolivia. Butch brings his girlfriend, Etta Place, played by Catherine Ross. Etta's a stabilizing influence in the men, though she is willing to partake in their outlaw life up to a point. Upon arriving in Bolivia, they attempt to live straight lives. The pull of their old skills is too strong. They soon return to banditry, this time robbing banks in small Bolivian towns. These scenes balance humor and tension. Our heroes struggle with the language barrier and the unfamiliarity of their surroundings. The climax of the film is the well-known shootout in San Vincent. After a series of successful heists, the law finally catches up with them. Butch and Sundance find themselves trapped in a small house, completely surrounded by the Bolivian soldiers. Despite being outgunned and outnumbered, they make a defiant last stand. In these final moments, their camaraderie is highlighted. Butch even suggests they escape to Australia as the gunfire intensifies. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid is critically acclaimed for its innovative approach to the Western genre. It manages to blend comedy, action, and historical drama in a unique concept that's hard to pull off. The chemistry between Newman and Redford elevates the movie even further. The film's dialogue is sharp and memorable. This contributes greatly to its wide appeal and lasting legacy. It won several Academy Awards, including Best Original Screenplay for William Goldman. Director George Roy Hill and cinematographer Conrad Hall make the movie timeless. The way they reshaped the genre and influenced future films is undeniable. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid remains a seminal work in American cinema. The movie was also a financial success following its release in 1969. With a budget of approximately $6 million, the film went on to gross over $100 million, making it one of the highest grossing films of that year. This impressive return was largely due to the star power of Paul Newman and Robert Redford. Their dynamic on-screen chemistry attracted vast audiences. The movie remains a staple in the realm of classic American cinema. It continues to find new audiences and generate revenue. Early in my personal film education in my young teen years, I wanted to see what the hype of this film was all about. I picked it up on DVD and loved it instantly. It's a bit slow by today's standards, but the tone and feeling are undeniably charming. Even with the heavier moments and shocking ending, it's pure cinematic joy. Check out this playlist for more from the AFI Top 100 movie list. I'll be covering them all.